Hello. So in this short video, uh, what I'm going to show you to do is how to set up assets in Maya ready for export over to Unity Engine. So we'll jump straight in. Um, what I've done, I've built a quick level white box. Uh, so this is just like a quick level design plan that I want to get across into Engine so I can have a look at it, walk around inside it, just really test the scale and the size of it. So um, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to start with first of all, um, is as you can see, um, these assets here um, are just really, really simple primitives. Oh, I've missed one there. Um, and all I've done is combine those together because they're not actually going to be used in a game. Um, they are just there as placeholders currently. Um, just so when I put all this across into Engine to test it out, um, it's just really primitive. These placeholders are going to be eventually where assets will be um, in a more finalized design. Um, then I've got um, my actual white box and just some extra little things I've built, um, just some like placeholder lights. So what I'm going to do um, is before I even go to export the file, there's a few steps that we have to go through before we export. So uh, what I need to do first of all is if you look over in your attribute editor with one of these selected, you'll notice that over time, as you make adjustments to a mesh, as you combine things, separate things, delete things, do extrudes, you'll notice that it builds up a list of history. Now, a lot of this, we don't want it. It's just something that's gonna, we don't need it anymore. The asset's built, it's ready to go into cross into engine. So to get rid of that history, all we do is select the asset, then we go to edit, delete all by type and history. Now you can see it gets rid of all that. All I'm left with is my mesh and my material. Now, again, same with these placeholders. Um, you can see I've already deleted the history on those and the light assets, again, they've already um, had history deleted. So what I need to do is, as you can see at the moment as well, everything has got the same shader on same material so if you remember in last session when we were talking about shaders and materials if you want in different parts to have different textures on there to be different colors then you need to look at applying your materials so what i'm going to do i'm going to apply a different material to each one of these um, so i'm going to set these up so i'm going to right click add new material and i'm just going to put a lambert on that they're my placeholder assets so i'm just going to put placeholder underscore asset underscore mat so I'm just keeping a naming convention going. So that's done. And then I'm going to apply another one to my actual white box. So I'm just going to apply a Lambert. And I'm going to call that white box underscore matte for material again. I'm going to change the colour of this. And I'm going to darken it off slightly. Just so we can kind of see the different materials on things. And we can see them standing off against each other. Um, exactly the same with my lights. I'm just going to apply a new material, Lambert, and I'm just going to call that lights underscore matte. Now again, I'm just going to change colour of that. Um, I'll make them just for this, just like a blue colour. So you can kind of see everything's got its own colour. Um, another thing I need to do is, at the moment, as you can see there, um, the mesh at the moment is called Polysurface. Now it's called Polysurface 26 Shape there because it's a combination of different things. Combination of like extrudes, planes, boxes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna name the mesh because in an engine, or in engine, it's like this for example, um, what we'll have when we export this across as a level, we'll have lots of meshes that are all called Polysurface. So just so we can identify things better and identify parts of assets we're just going to give everything that naming convention so as you can see here for the placeholder assets it's placeholder underscore asset underscore mat so i'm going to call the actual mesh placeholder underscore asset i'm going to do the same with my white box i'm going to call that white box i'm just going to leave it like that and then the lights i'm just going to call those lights so everything's got that naming convention going to it. Right, so that's all done. Um, I think everything's okay with that. Right, what I do need to do 
is I need to adjust my pivot point now. So as you can see, um, depends on what you've built from and how you've built with your pivot point. When I look at that and I press W for the move key, my pivot point is there right at the bottom. Now, when I'm putting this in engine, I want it to sit right on note space. So having that at the bottom is all right. But sometimes you might notice that by default, um, I'll just go to modify center pivot. Your pivot may be somewhere like up here in the middle. Now, if you're wanting to, if you're building an asset that you're wanting to place right on the on the floor or on top of a plane or something like that, what you need to do is, if you're holding D on your keyboard, that allows you to adjust your pivot. And I'm just going to drop that right down on the bottom of the asset. And I'm just going to, when I look, I mean, obviously, I've done that for the others. Um, I was just doing that to kind of show you. So if I look at those, you can see right on the floor. I'm going, to, I'm going to select all three together, modify, center pivot. With all everything selected, I'm adjusting the pivot of everything at once. So I'm just going to drop that right on the floor like that. Right. So now, um, we're more or less ready. There's one more step we have to go through before we go to export. Now, over here in your channel box, you'll notice um, there are different values here for your translate. So translate X, Y, and Z means basically where it is in 3D space. You've got a rotate X, Y, and Z. That's if any rotates have been applied. So if I just select everything, and I, for example, will twist everything 90 degrees round, like that. You can see on here, it actually affects it. So you can see that whatever you do to this asset in 3D space, so scaling it, rotating it, moving it, affects these numbers. Now, when that goes across into engine, that can become a problem. Um, if your translates are set somewhere not zero and your scales are not set to one, one, one for X, Y, and Z, when you try to, if you take an asset into engine and you realize you need to rotate it slightly or you need to scale it, it won't scale uniformly and it won't scale in the correct way. So just make sure that the last step before you export, you select everything, you go to modify and you freeze the transforms. Now, in here, you've not noticed any difference, and that's because it's kind of something I've done previously, but just make sure that you select everything, modify, freeze transforms, and just check these values in your channel box in your top right hand corner. Right, now that's ready for export. So what I'm gonna do, um, I need to make sure that the plugin is loaded up for exporting as FBX. So by default, if you're using your machines at home, um, the FBX exporter plugin might not be loaded. So if you go to Windows, Settings Preferences, and go to Plugin Manager, all we need to do is select the plugin from here, um, it's down there. So all we need to do is make sure that that has got a loaded tick in it. So FBX Maya, it's ticked. So I'm just gonna click Refresh and click Close. That'll load the exporting tool for you. Now if you select everything in your scene, so just left click, drag select, and go to file, export selection, but click the option box. Now in here, what you need to do is where it says general options, you need to select the file type as FBX export and click export selection. Now, once that's done, uh, as you can see, because I'm working in a project, so the unit one project and then scenes, it's taken me to my scenes folder. So I'm going to drop it in here and I'm just going to call it white box underscore level underscore version 1.1. I'm going to keep it saved in a version because what I might want to do, oh, I was a little bit hasty there. I'm going to keep it saved in a version because what I might want to do is I may want to come back to Maya and make adjustments and send another version later on or an updated version back into the engine. And what else I'm going to do is Within the FBX exporter under options, there are some settings. So because my scene's built in meters, you need to make sure that within the units tab here, you make sure it's set to meters. And that should be okay. So if I click export. Now that's exported. So if I go to my files, you can see that within my project folder under scenes, there is a FBX file at my white box level. Now that's it for this part of the video. Uh, what we're going to do in the next part, we're going to look at setting up a simple scene in Unity 3D, and then we're going to export our assets across.